All right, so welcome to the Patient Pod. This is episode number seven. Today we're talking anything and everything when it comes to being present and mindful in your daily lives. A lot of times in our lives, uh, especially now, you know, I don't know how it was in the 40s, but I, I know how it is now. But I know now we are bombarded with so many things. I mean, your phones are ringing. You got people who want you to come do this. You want, you got, you're watching the news. You're doing everything. It is hard to be who you are in that present moment. You're thinking about the future. I mean, you wake up in the morning, you're automatically thinking about, oh, man, I got like 15 things to do before I even go to work. And then when you get off work, here we go again. We got more stuff going on. So you're, you're constantly thinking about the future, but then you're also thinking about the past. You're thinking about all the things that has happened to you in your life. You're thinking about the things that happened to you today. Did I do them right? Did I do them wrong? And we fail to make sure that we're thinking about who we are in that particular moment. This episode, we're going to outline some of the main pitfalls that that will have in your life. And we're also going to outline the things that you can do in order to help you out in the next coming months and the rest of your life. You know, and, and this being episode seven, we're starting to accumulate some data and, and getting some good feedback from everybody as well. And I think the, the biggest point is, is this kind of locks in everything when it comes to the nervous system, the brainwave states, the power of thinking and using all these tools to incorporate mindfulness and the present moment is there's nothing better than the present moment. It's the only thing that's real. Mm -hmm. You know, the past is the past, the future is the future. Now, you know, we're a record of the past. So we wake up and we have a, you know, if you're 35 years old and you wake up and you have an accumulation of, of 35 years of living thoughts, experiences, emotions that are all tied into experiences. And we talked about this before of creating your own movie. Well, a lot of your movie has already been played, but at any point you can change that. Yep. And so, you know, I think over time too, is being present is a skill that you have to learn and we have to give ourselves a little grace and, and take a step back and really realize what being present is. Mm -hmm. And so, um, with a lot of the techniques we're going to talk about, I think it can really change, um, the mindset of a lot of people into helping them stay present. So if you have 80 to 90,000 thoughts a day, the average human being, most of them are repetitive. So say you have 30,000 thoughts that are just tripled throughout the day, if not quadrupled. And if you're in a high anxiety state, it's way, way, way up there. Way worse. And it's come to the point where the brain is an electrical frequency. So if that thing is going haywire, there is no possible way to stay present. So by tricking your nervous system, retraining how it works, how we think and how every thought is tied to an emotion, controlling those emotions, with our thoughts is the key, but recognizing what the heck is even causing these thoughts to fire all different ways is the key to being mindful. So, you know, we're going to talk about breathing. We're going to talk about meditation and how, and, and the reality of things controlling these thoughts is really the key to health and wellness and anxiety. And not only that, but paving the way for your future, man. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think with me, the biggest thing about and I still struggle with, and, and I, we want all of our listeners to know that we still struggle with this as well. Oh, we are not, yeah, we are not, we are not people who have this all figured out. We are, we are people who are constantly working on this as well. And that's why it's so, it was so pertinent for us to talk about. And, and, and the reason why we wanted to talk about it, the biggest thing that I've noticed, and, and if you haven't noticed this, uh, it'll probably be that light bulb that goes off in your head. The biggest thing that the problem with not being present with your life each and every day is that you miss out on so much. Mm -hmm. You miss out on so many things that are going on around you because you can't even focus on who you are in that point. You got family members around you that are loving, who are there for you. You miss them because you're thinking about yesterday or you're thinking about two years from now. Mm -hmm. You got coworkers, you got a boss, you got all these people, you're helping people at your job. All your, so with us, we have patients that come in and if I'm not present where, where I'm at today, I will miss these little things with these patients. I will still do my job the best I can, but I will miss those interactions with patients if I'm not here with that patient right now. So I think one of the biggest things that it, it especially with me, it's missing out on things. And I finally, and I, I went through this a lot in a lot of my um, struggles come from going through school, doing, you know, just kind of grinding things out. 
I was so worried about who, you know, I wanted to be in the future that I didn't take time to actually look at myself at that point and go, you know what, like everything around you is pretty freaking cool. Mm -hmm. Like you got a lot of people around you that are really cool that you can learn from. You're in a cool situation, better than most. And all you're worried about is six years from now, what you can do and where you want to be. And you're getting so stressed out, just like you were talking about. When you're not present and when you're not mindful, you're just so stressed out. Mm -hmm. Well, you're pretty much a robot. Yeah. You know, you're, you're subconsciously just walking through life. And, and that's a lot of what we want on this podcast is to produce content that allows for more quality of a life. And it's the truth. It's how the brain works. It's how the body works. And we deal with these struggles every single day. And, you know, there's days where you have good days and there's days where you have awful days and subpar days. And I think it's 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 the compound effect of, of good things over time, repetitive habits. And again, being present is a skill. Mm -hmm. It's a skill that you constantly have to work on. And you got to catch yourself. That's step number one is catching yourself when your mind's drifting. Yep. You know, and focusing on your breathing. Your breathing is controlled. Uh, pardon me. Your, your breathing helps control your nervous system, which will calm down, you know, going back into the brainwave states. Um, and again, it's being present and whether that's a tool of taking a couple deep breaths in, focusing on the moment where you're at, you know, 3d awareness of where you are in space, but it definitely with, with being a chiropractor and, and, and seeing patients like we do, and, and we owe it to the patients to be a hundred percent present. And that's any, yeah. any physician, you know, you got that moment in time to connect and it's your opportunity to really find out a cause of what you know, maybe is it stress and anxiety that's causing skeletal pain? We yep. see it all the freaking time. Yep. And so by giving those little tools to help, you know, basically lock down the and address the cause of where this anxiety's come from. My favorite the, the thing that's helped me the most in the last five years, no doubt, is cold exposure. You know, I watched a Wim Hof video five years ago and uh our buddy Nikki B and I we, we got fired up. Shout out. Shout out to Nikki B. And, uh, you know, we, we put ourselves in those situations to feel uncomfortable. Started off with cold showers. And, uh, you know, you and I were roommates at the time. I remember yeah. blasting some M&M and just going to town. I was like, this guy's crazy. Just fired up. It's like cold showers. Cold showers. Some Tony Robbins guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just in biohacking. I've always been obsessed with finding different ways naturally to let the body do what it needs to do. And But I won't lie. I started off just getting amped up for those cold showers. But then what I realized is, what cold showers really did is it exposed me to something very uncomfortable, you know, and when you're in an uncomfortable situation, you're only focused on that moment. You're focused on that cold water hitting you, breathing through it. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you start doing that time and time again. And then a stressful situation comes in in your life. Um, and then you focus on what did I do in that cold shower? I took some deep breaths in. I worked on a, a long exhale and I felt my heart rate slow down and I felt more control. And I think, the body is a huge machine. Mm -hmm. There's no man-made machine. I don't care. AI is coming along freaking way. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. we have something inside us called innate intelligence that uh, naturally allows our body to regulate itself. But what happens is we're bombarded with information, stress, um, way too much stimulation from screens. In the world we live in these days, it's so hard. So going back to the 40s, you know, there's times when, man, it probably wouldn't have been so bad because life was simple. However, you couldn't order, uh, you know, yeah. Grubhub no. <laughs> and no. get it in 30 minutes. No. So there's, there's, it's controlling the environment. I think is the biggest key to this situation, man. Yep. Yeah, and, and when you're not present, it, it kills your creativity as well. Oh, heck yeah. Because you're not, you're not allowing your brain to be free in, in who you should be. You know, I know everyone, it, it, it doesn't matter who it is, wants to be the best that they can be. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, r regardless of what level that is, they want to be the best that they can be and being bombarded with everything that's going on around you and not focusing, like you're saying, on your breath and making sure that you reduce that stress. It kills that creativity in you and it really starts to stunt who you can be. Mm -hmm. And I always thought early on that if I just continue to focus on the future and where I want to be, because you listen to a lot of stuff on the Internet and they're like, you know, and we've talked about this before, visualize who you want to be. And so the second part to this is you visualize who you want to be, but you don't focus on that all the time mm -hmm. because you still have to live the life that you're living at that point. If you're only focusing 
if you're only visualizing all freaking day, you're just stressed out because it's so much because you're not there yet. You can't get there. You're not going to be there in the next week or the next month. So when we talk about, you know, kind of manifesting your, your future, you want to use that as a tool, but not as a full life deal. Sure. You want to wake up, think about those things, but not let it consume you to the point to where you're not able to be who you are in that particular moment. That way you can, you can use your creativity. You can use that extra mind space to get better because if you continue to get better, it'll make it even greater once you get to that point. Yeah. And, and I think too, you know, if your life's a big book, you know, it's, it's realizing that those chapters behind us are over. You can't go back and rewrite them. However, you can focus on the chapters you're in now and the pages you're on now and moving forward, what the, that could do to your story as time goes on. Because the hardest thing to do is, and this is natural human survival, is to think, well, last time I went around that rock, there was a T-Rex or mm -hmm. there was a, a bear the last time I went around this situation. So we're going to wake up in survival mode thinking about what happened in the past but it's over it's and you can take your life lessons and everything you've learned because that's a gift is everything you've learned up until that point and take the good with the bad because i guarantee if you count your blessings they're way more than and then all the negative thoughts that you're thinking and so if we can consciously be aware at all times of, and again it's a skill the number one thing we have to do to start is to be aware when our mind starts to drift mm -hmm. And then the tools of, of breathing exercises. So let's talk a little bit about, again, the nervous system. And that word gets, uh, you know, that's one that we've gotten some feedback from. Uh, hey, break down the nervous system and what it is. And we can just yeah. keep it simple. It's your survival mode. It's fear of the unknown. Your heart rate starts to freaking speed up. Your thoughts go racing. That is normal human reaction, especially with overstimulation. Yep. It is proven that if you take some deep breaths in, and you really focus on your breathing, you can feel your heart rate start to, to slowly go down. And so that's step number one, is I guarantee you anybody in a fight or flight state, which is you're just high anxiety, high stress, I guarantee you that you're just not focusing on your breathing. You're taking shallow breaths, you're not present, and, and that's step number one, focusing on that breathing. And again, I can't stress this enough, get in the cold showers. Yeah. And it's it sounds freaky, it sounds weird, it sounds crazy, however, the water's, you know, 40 to 50 degrees, um, not going to kill you. It's going to be very, very uncomfortable. And as soon as that water hits you, you're going to, first thing you're going to do is run out of there because it's <laughs> very, very uncomfortable. Taking a deep breath in and taking a long exhale. And what you're going to find is, is when your mind starts to drift, I mean, if you, if you look at your body as a machine, the brain is the control center. The body is just following where the mind goes. But if you take control of the steering wheel, so to speak, and you just grab a hold of it and say, no, we're going to stay right here. We're going to breathe through this. We're going to sit through the fire. And at the end of that fire, we're going to get a win because we realize we controlled basically our emotions. We controlled yeah. our, the outcome of, of, of a sympathetic overload or of a stress response that could lead to an outburst, a decision that you don't really truly want to make. Um, all sorts of stuff can happen that aren't really that great. And then that can compound over time into just uh, a stress anxiety mess. Yeah. And another thing that we haven't talked about, you know, we said so we've talked about breathing. We've talked about cold showers. Another thing is deliberately being thankful in the moment for what's going on at that point. Mm -hmm. And that's gratitude. So you so we are all thankful for anything and everything around us. Mm -hmm. But if we don't actually tell ourselves, hey that is really cool right there. And I'm very thankful for that. You don't get those benefits that you would, you know, if you're just running around and, and living life. I noticed once I started actually going, Hey, I'm really thankful for that right there. And I started doing, and, and my wife helps me out. She's, she's a, a social worker and a mental health specialist. So she's taught me a lot of things about that. And she would ask me, you know, what are three things that you liked about today? Mm -hmm. And it seems like a very, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I know what I like. I mean, I had plenty of it, but until you make yourself actually think about it, I mean, I, I found myself being very flustered, mm -hmm. uh, frustrated because I was like, I don't want to think about that. Everything, you know, it was good. 
But then when I finally used that exercise multiple times, I started digging. I started digging deeper because I, I wanted to not use the same three over and over and over. So, you know, the next day, the next day in my brain, I'm thinking about it and I'm like, man, you know, what is something else? And so you start digging deep and deeper and deeper. And all of a sudden you find this whole bag full of stuff that is awesome about your life. Uh, and back to you're talking about how negative we are. Isn't it amazing how negative we are as humans? And it's so frustrating. Mm -hmm. You wake up and you wake up in the morning, you can get you some coffee, whatever you like to drink and everything's good. And by the time you get to work, you're just pissed off mm -hmm. for no reason. Yeah. Well, and it, I think too, it's, it's easy to be pissed off. It's easy to yeah. kind of just be on that negative side of things because um, self development is, is a very hard thing to do. And yeah. it's, it requires a, a, a dissection really of your thoughts and where are these coming from now? You know, a lot of these tools we're given, um, I truly believe can help people, mm -hmm. you know, but there's also mental health specialists out there, psychologists yeah. and, and counselors that can really address and help you kind of manage um, those thoughts and, and where these deep rooted problems are coming from. Cause if we don't fix the deep rooted pro problems that are causing the stress and anxiety, you really can't get to where real you need deep, to be. real deep. They're real deep things. You don't, you don't even, you don't even get, but yeah, like you said, uh, we're giving you some tips, but really the, the best thing. And, and with the patient pod, we're here to help you just, you know, realize that there's, there's avenues to get help with each and everything. Um, I know me, I, I go see a therapist, uh, for different things just to try to keep my mind right and, and the stress down. And so with this, you know, I want to break down barriers about the, the stigma behind, oh, you see a therapist. I don't need to see a therapist. Mm -hmm. I'm fine. No, it, it's great for everyone. It's great for everyone. Even if you have a great life and nothing's going on, there's still tons of stressors. It's the world it's going on around you. I haven't met one person that doesn't have a stressor. So everyone can use that type of work if you're if you're struggling with something within your life so with the with the techniques that we're talking about use those but also if you feel like that you could benefit from something like that definitely go seek out somebody go seek somebody out you can do a, a simple google search and it'll it'll send you right to somebody that can help you out with your with your mental health yeah and you might go through a couple before you find the one that uh you really connect to but yeah. that's a part of wellness and for some reason you know i think with this day and age we're, we're it's more common for the average human to go to a counselor or go to therapy and it and it's we need to get over that whole stigma or you know idea that something's really wrong with me if i'm going to a counselor yeah because what they're doing is they're they're getting rid of a lot of the baggage that you're carrying on and you could carry that on your whole life mm -hmm. and, and you could have emotions that reside um in your in your thought patterns and in your body that uh could lead to some health issues down the road, or it could, it could alter the function of a relationship that could have been really great, but could, but you didn't fix those little things. Mm -hmm. And like you said, we want to dwell on things. And a lot of the times it's easy to not hold ourselves accountable to blame the other person. It was their fault. It was that situation that caused me to be feel this way. Yeah. The number one tool that I could give right now, you know, if you could just do this right now is it's to, lay down, whether it's your couch or whether it's your bed in a dark room, shut off all the pressure and the noise, focus on deep breaths in through the nose, three seconds in, three seconds out. If you really want to get in some good breathing exercises, Wim Hof has a, an amazing technique, pretty intense. So maybe start off with some basic stuff, but just listen, feel your body. What is it telling you? You know, where, where do you want to go? Dispenza talks about these life altering moments that really cause you to make that switch mm -hmm. and, and life is so precious. And what happens is, is you go on through life and you're living and then something bad happens. We're all going to experience death. We're all going to experience heartache. And sometimes it's, it's those moments that are life changing moments. And so you, then you, you realize from a different perspective, how grateful you are, how grateful you were to have that time with your grandfather. Mm -hmm. How grateful you are to have that time with um, your loved ones or our patients uh, and yep. just embracing that every single moment and just putting in a little light in every single person you come across and you will become fulfilled. You'll feel your heart kind of pump up. You'll feel the warmth and the love. And, and it's such a 
such a scary time right now with uh, stress and anxiety and, and hate. But again, you want to go on to, there's, there's so much good in the world right now too. Yep. And we don't dwell on that because it's not exciting. No, it's not as exciting. We want to just constantly sit there and drill the negativity and we got to flip the script. We have to take control. And if we, if you lay in a, in a room, you know, lay on your back, focus on your breathing. You're not worried about what you have to do in 20 minutes. You're not worried about what happened throughout the day. Listen to your body. It's going to, you're going to feel certain emotions come up, embrace it, sit through the fire Mm -hmm. and uh, focus on that breathing, deep breaths in, deep breaths out. And then like we talked about visual visualization. So manifesting again, I, it kind of annoys me sometimes when I hear that word because everybody wants to manifest And, and that's great. I hope everybody does. Yeah. However, it is a thought that creates an emotion and a feeling. So if you're in that moment, say when you're 90 years old, where you want to be, I'm going to be on a, on a beach in San Diego, California, getting ready to go out and surf when I'm 90 years old. But when I'm there, I'm not just like, Ooh, California surfing. I'm sitting looking at the water and I'm feeling so much gratefulness, so much gratitude of the life that I live and how many people we've helped with this podcast, with our patients that come in. It's not about me. It's about making this world a better place than when you, when you found it. Yeah. And because our time on this planet really isn't that long when we think about the time of existence, but every thought has a frequency and controlling those thoughts and, and really focusing on what we want to feel because then the body's just going to follow along with that. Yeah. And when you use that technique for the first time, second time, you might fail a couple of times. It's going to be hard oh. to, to, to stay within just your head. Uh, I know when I've tried it a a ton of times, you know, especially when it's a very stressful day and you do it, man, you can't hardly keep the thoughts from just shooting at you. And and you started, you know, and the first time I thought, I was like, well, it'd be easy. I'll just sit there and, you know, and uh, and really calm my brain down. Oh, no, no, Mm -mm. it's firing. I mean, you got thoughts hitting you everywhere. So, you know, don't get discouraged if you, you know, try these things for the first time and it doesn't work out the best. It's just like anything. You got to keep working at it. And like, like Dr. Aiken said, feel those emotions, feel those thoughts, and then get better the next time you, you try it out. Yeah, and that's why I love the cold showers so much and cold exposure. Because again, when you hit that cold water, immediately your heart starts to race. Flight or flight kicks in. You want to get the heck out of there because your body's going, this is uncomfortable. This isn't safe. The answer is, is, is over time, we've gotten soft mm-hmm. because, you know, 50, 60 years ago, 70 did they have efficient water heaters? You know, we were bathing in rivers back in the day. Yep. And I guess that's why that has been for me, you know, and you can even look at our books here at the office. The day that I started the cold showers, the business changed because it allowed me to be more present and mm-hmm. it allowed me to, to focus in on every single moment. And, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a skill that you have to take a lot of time in doing and you have to give yourself some grace because it's going to suck for a while. But I can't, I mean, cold showers changed my life. And so it might not be for everyone. But again, you get in a high anxiety straight state. You're, you're stressed out. You're overwhelmed. Your body is doing the same thing when it first hits that cold water. But by controlling your breathing and taking control of your mind. Your mind's going to drift throughout the day. Mm-hmm. But it's correcting it. And finding those moments where you're like, ooh, this thing's drifting a little bit. I'm going to grab the reins and I'm in control. That's the other thing is we let so many other things control our lives. Yep. We let, we let, you know, bosses, coworkers, spouses, people that, you know, are influencers on social media or good, bad, the ugly dumb videos. Yeah. We let that take over our mind and, and we are robbing our time on this planet when we do yep. that. And so I think there's nothing more fulfilling than, than controlling your own life because nobody knows, no, nobody knows it better than you. No. And I, and, and, Sorry if I butchered this up, but I was watching Coach Prime on YouTube and he Coach was, Prime. yeah, Coach Prime. Everybody's really excited. He's, he's doing awesome. But he, he was giving a speech to his football players and basically he was telling them that he can have a bad minute and he might can have a bad hour, but he's never going to have a bad day Ooh. because he, he chooses what he's going to do, what his next move is and how he's going to live his life. He chooses not to dwell on something if it is, if it does approach him at the wrong time and he has a little bit of a rough time. So with that, you get to choose what you want to be and you get to choose where you want to go. 
you, 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 a lot of times you can't control certain things that happen in life, but you can control what happens afterwards. Yep. And so, uh, you know, Deion Sanders, what a stud, man. It's Coach Prime, dude. Great. Everybody's buying uh, Colorado hats. I want that Leon Sandcastle jersey is what I want. A Leon Sandcastle? You remember that? Uh-uh. Who was that? It was like the 2013. It was like an ad that he uh, basically went back and got in the draft as Leon Sandcastle with like a, <laughs> a wig and a mustache. Definitely definitely get that. He gets I, drafted by the Chiefs. I heard everybody's buying his uh, his sunglasses too. Dude, I heard they made like millions the first day. We're gonna we're gonna have to get some sunglasses and a Colorado hat. But what a great example, though. I mean, had a hell of a career, stud athlete. I mean, baseball and football, um, one of the last to do that, really, since yep. Joe Jackson and those guys. But um, over time, that that guy was. I always looked at him as a stud, and then he he put in his time. You know, he he his his. Overall, uh, his cause is bigger than just winning football games. Yes. It's oh, yeah. changing lives. And, yep. And he has established a brand. And I hope he does well. I hope. Uh, Absolutely. You know, and that's such an inspiring thing, you know, to, to watch that happen. But again, it's his, his mindset. A hundred percent. He's not going to let one minute, one hour ruin the rest of his day. Because if you look, you got 24 hours in the day. That's a lot of time that you can do good, too. Yep. And, and so we got to start looking at the glass half empty. Um, but again, taking control of it, not letting anything external affect your where you're going. Now, you're going to get knocked off the horse. And, and it's the classic saying, you get knocked off seven times, you're going to get up eight. Yeah. And so, you know, Rocky Balboa ain't so bad. You know, dude got pounded for round after round, but then he stuck in there and just hit a different level. Got him. <laughs> Apollo Creed, R.I.P. R.I.P. Apollo Creed. <laughs> Apollo Creed. But Baby yeah. Creed, he stepped it up. Baby Creed, yep, he definitely made a comeback. Freaking and, uh, love those movies, dude. Yeah, those are great movies. You know, Rudy Rudiger. Um, think of all those movies. That the just, underdogs. You gotta love the underdog because they didn't allow, they didn't accept, you know, their circumstances. And that represents way more people in the world than, than you know, the. it was just easy. Oh, no. I don't, I don't really know many. I don't even know if I know somebody that just had it easy all the way through and it was just... So like those stories are awesome. You know, they're very relatable. Oh, a hundred percent. It's, it's reality. Yeah. Cause yeah, nobody cruises through life with no problems. Cause I guarantee there's a whole bunch of problems subconscious. Yeah. I, I would say, um, the best, we're all going to experience this in the next heck hour, 24 hour period, whatever that is. Whenever you feel in a funk, whenever you feel like things are drifting away, say you've tried some of these tools in the morning and by the afternoon, you're a mess. Be aware of it. Mm -hmm. Write it down. Yep. Why did your thoughts start to drift? What were you even thinking about? And then be aware of what those are. Um, again, the deep breathing, uh, you know, and some people call it box breathing. Um, there's all sorts of different techniques. The whole point is, is just taking deep breaths in. Avoid shallow breathing because that's what happens when we're stressed. It's very short and quick. Deep breaths in through the stomach, three seconds in, three seconds out. You do five of those deep breaths in and out. And watch what happens. Game changer. Game changer. Your 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 heart rate will start to decrease. And you'll be like, okay. And maybe you need to walk away from a second from a situation that you're in. Mm -hmm. um, but just being aware of that moment, catching yourself. That's step number one is catching yourself. And then write down those thoughts. Write down the emotions you were feeling. Read through them. Mm -hmm. And then sit, lay down in a room, whether it's your couch, living room, or your bedroom. Avoid any distractions, whether it's kids, dogs. Your phone, get it out of there. Focus on your breathing for about 10 minutes, if not 20, if not longer. Again, deep breath in for three seconds through the nose. Slowly exhale. And then uh, just be present in that moment. Absolutely. And then get in that cold shower, man. That's that's bonus round. That's bonus. bonus. That's, that's bonus round. Level. That's next level. Cold shower is is definitely next level. Well, I think that's all we got for today, Dr. Egan. Yeah, that man. was awesome. We're rocking. This this is our first episode in our new podcast room where we're actually sitting in front of each other. So no uh, glitches, no glitches. We're 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 chiropractors. We're trying to learn how to be uh, podcasters, and uh, along with that comes all this tech as well. So, yeah, you know, I mean, we didn't learn about this, uh, <laughs> but hey, man, got to give the credit to you for all hey, the shout out. stuff. Shout out, uh, Dr. Bryant. Yeah, Dr. Bryant. Just just uh, just. just youtube in a way back there just you know <laughs> figuring it out back there man hey but and this is another thing too you know we're only human beings and mm -hmm. you and i lived together for a handful of years 
And heck, we talked about this a long time ago. Yep. And so, you know, it's, but our whole mission is to give these tools with love and with grace and with an understanding that we have these problems too. We've lived them. Yeah. Um, and, and, and again, I'm going to go back to that cold shower because of how much it's changed my life. Get it's, in that it's changed patients' lives too. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I've seen high stress anxiety patients come in and they even tell me, they're just like, I don't know what it was. That was the freest um, feeling I've ever had. And it was cheap, a um, little uncomfortable, but I'm, I'm hooked. Yeah. And so um, give yourself those tools. But again, um, give yourself some grace and know that uh, life is precious. It's a gift. And that, uh, just enjoy every single moment because you never know when it's going to be over. Absolutely. All right, guys. So every Tuesday in the morning, somewhere probably around 8 o'clock, we're going to be dropping every episode. This is episode number seven, correct? Seven, seven. This is episode number seven. So that'll be dropping this coming Tuesday. And we're going to stay consistent. We're going to do it every Tuesday. And then also, uh, if you're listening to this on the Apple Podcast, check out our YouTube channel as well. We've got all the, all the videos going up. We've got little clips of the podcast. If you're somebody who likes to consume your content in a little bit more of a manageable uh, fashion, we're, we're trying to get better at putting a little bit more clips. So if you don't have time to listen to the full episode, you can do that as well. So make sure you subscribe to both of those. That way you can keep up with us. So look out for this episode every Tuesday. Live your truth, baby. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Uh-huh.